This video is sponsored by Keeper. What is going on everyone? My name is Jason, and these are the 10 reasons why everyone loves the iPhone. Okay, let me ask you a question. Do you love the iPhone? No, I mean like love the iPhone. Well, if you do have an unhealthy love addiction to your iPhone, honestly, you're not alone as many people do. And even though there's a lot of reasons to why, hear me out on why I think this is the case. Apple is the king of minor details. I'm a firm believer that phones, especially today, are more common than ever before. So all the big features like build quality, cameras, OLED displays, none of them are unique to Apple. And even things like iMessage and AirDrop, no doubt these features are awesome and are signature reasons to go with an iPhone, but that's not what I'm talking about here. No, at the end of the day, to me, what makes the iPhone so sticky really comes down to the subtle little everyday features that most of the time you don't even notice. And honestly, a lot of us take for granted. So today I'm going to go over 10 super subtle reasons why people love the iPhone. But before I get into the list, if you're an Apple fanboy like me, let me know in the comments what your favorite low key feature is. And if you're an Apple hater and all about the Android nation, let me know what it is about the iPhone that makes you despise it so badly. Okay, but let's jump right into subtle feature number one, and that's the iPhone's built-in scanner. Now, you might be scrolling through your phone right now saying that I don't see a scanner here, and that's actually because it's not a standalone app. It's actually a baked-in feature of the iPhone's Notes application. When you click to create a new note and you press on this camera icon here, you'll get a list of different options, one of them being scanned documents. It then fires up your camera and all you have to do is hover over whatever document you're trying to scan, your phone IDs it and automatically snaps an image. You can scan multiple pages and adjust the framing to clean it up as needed. And once you're done, you can save, email or text the scanned document to whoever as a PDF. This is super handy when you're in a rush and don't have a printer nearby. And the quality that you can get from your iPhone is pretty superb. Now sticking with the notes app for just a second, another low key feature that's crazy useful is the scan text option. Just take your camera and get whatever text you're looking to grab into the frame, wait a second or two and your iPhone will automatically digitize the text onto your note and it does it almost instantaneously. You could also do this live text feature on the regular camera app as well. And you could even go into your photos app and click into any old photo that has visible text in it and lift it from there as well. Now you will need a relatively newer iPhone 10 or higher that's running iOS 15 or up in order to take advantage of this feature. But man, this capability is so useful if you're taking notes in class or something. And it's pretty incredible how quickly and accurately the iPhone is able to do this. Now, before we get into the next subtle detail on why the iPhone is so loved, I want to give a big shout out to today's video sponsor, Keeper. Keeper is one of the most popular and trusted security and encryption platforms that provides an extremely important and useful service, and that's managing all your passwords. Considering how much of our day-to-day -day lives now is done via the internet, it's led to an inordinate amount of usernames and passwords that we have to keep track of. And dude, given the ease in which this sensitive data could be stolen from you, requirements around passwords have gotten so stringent, they're almost impossible to remember on your own. Keeper's password manager stores all of your passwords in a secure digital web vault that you can easily access from any device running any operating system. It uses something called a zero knowledge security model, which ensures that even Keeper themselves have no way of accessing the passwords you store as each one is personally encrypted. So your information is extremely protected against something like a data breach. Once you get your passwords into the vault, it auto fills your login credentials on all of your corresponding website and apps. You can view and edit your info in the vault anytime on your desktop or mobile device, and it's an extremely easy to use service. It's no wonder why Keeper has won numerous awards and has been lauded as one of the best password managers by multiple tech publications. And if you're interested in learning firsthand just how impactful using this service could be, now's the time to do it because Keeper is hooking you guys up with 30% off their Keeper Unlimited and Keeper Family plans. Just make sure to use the link in the description and this awesome discount will automatically be applied. Start simplifying the way you manage your passwords. Check out Keeper today. Okay, the third feature has got to be one of my favorites and it's super straightforward. But you know when you're logging into something that has two-factor authentication built into it where they actually text you a code every time you log in? If you're doing it on an iPhone, when the code comes in via text and you click on the box to enter it, the iPhone gives you the option to paste the code directly by just clicking here. It sounds like it's not a big deal because that's really it, but dude, it's so convenient because everything these days requires two-factor authentication. And it's straight painful trying to go back and forth between the site or the app that you're trying to get into and a text message with the long code in it. Now, speaking of security, the fourth subtle feature I want to talk about is Face ID. And if you're saying to yourself, how is Face ID a subtle feature? It's a major component of the phone. I totally get where you're coming from, but hear me out for a second. 
Face ID is no doubt one of the major components of the newer iPhones and to me hands down the most sophisticated biometric security system on any mobile device. But the reason I have it on this list has more to do with the fact that you almost never realize that this thing is even here. Like you set it up, which is extremely easy by the way, and from there you just tap on the screen, it authenticates almost instantly and you swipe up to open your phone and it's business as usual. And at first there is some intentionality that goes into the process because you think it requires your attention. But dude, after a short while, Face ID is so unobtrusive to your user experience, you legit forget that it's there. Like how many times have you picked up someone else's iPhone and instinctually just swiped up? Only then being reminded that it's not your phone. It's definitely a feature that a lot of people take for granted and don't appreciate until it's gone, which to me is a telltale sign that it's masterfully integrated into the operating system. Okay, the next subtle feature that I want to talk about is honestly one that a lot of people don't know about. Many iPhones have a secret button on the back of the phone that could be used for a variety of different functions and this thing is called back tap. All you have to do is go to your settings, click on accessibility, select the touch option, and if you scroll all the way down, you'll see an option for back tap. And from there, you can assign what a double tap and a triple tap on the back of the phone will initiate. And you can see there's a lot you can map these functions to. Personally, I have double tap set to launch control center, which is impossible for me to reach one handed on my 13 Pro Max. And I have my triple tap set to take a screenshot. Again, super useful because it's impossible for me to do that one handed when I'm on the move. Now it does take some getting used to, mainly because you forget that this thing exists. But once you've used it a few times, back tap really does become a useful and convenient feature. Now, while we're on the subject of custom buttons, probably one of the most robust features that the iPhone has that almost no one uses is Shortcuts. Shortcuts allows you to create custom buttons on your home screen that you can map to perform a particular function, much like Backtap. Like you could see that I have this custom shortcut that once I press it, it automatically launches Google Maps and starts taking me to my home address, which is pretty cool. I also have this cool one where it allows you to scan barcodes with your camera and the iPhone automatically searches for the item on Amazon. Great if you're a value shopper like I am. And look, Shortcuts are awesome, but I kind of get why a lot of people don't use them. They're not the easiest things to set up and will take some intentionality to get them to work right. But dude, once you get into it, it can significantly change your user experience. And trust me when I say that shortcuts can really take your love of the iPhone to the next level. Okay, I've completely lost what number we're on, but the next feature that I wanna talk about is another one that I feel a lot of people take for granted, and that's the iPhone's haptic engine. If you've been on an iPhone for a long time, I wouldn't be surprised if you haven't paid much attention at all to the iPhone's haptic feedback. It's just kind of in the background as you navigate around the phone. But dude, it's almost jarring how immediate the difference is when you're using a phone that doesn't have Apple's haptic motor in it. The iPhone has by far the widest range of haptic feedback, giving you a unique feeling with a varying degree of vibration for virtually every different type of notification out there. It's also extremely precise when navigating around certain parts of the UI. I mean, just scroll through the times when setting an alarm and you'll know what I'm talking about. And it's so much more intentional and engaging in this small way. And when you compare it to most of the competition, you quickly realize that it does make a major difference. And kind of related, but not really, one of my favorite random features about the iPhone is being able to move around the cursor by holding on the space bar on the keyboard. When you need to correct something, it could be a pain trying to use your finger to get the cursor to a precise area of the text. So I love that you can just hold down the space bar and move the cursor around with your thumb. It's way easier and faster to make corrections and it works really well. Okay, the ninth subtle feature about the iPhone that honestly most of you probably don't even know exists is something called optimized battery charging. If you're a habitual plug your iPhone to charge every night type of person like I am, doing so can actually wreak havoc on your phone's battery health. All batteries degrade over time, but keeping your phone plugged in for extended charging sessions will definitely make it worse. So if you're on iOS 13 or newer and you plug your iPhone in at night, it charges up but actually stops at around 80%. It then uses machine learning to better understand your charging habits and will top off the rest of the 20% so it aligns with the time that you usually disconnect your phone from the charging cable. This is a really smart feature that helps increase the longevity of your iPhone, and you probably didn't even know that it was there. Okay, the last little feature is the one that you guys actually brought up the most when I asked on my community tab and on my Twitter, and that's the fact that iOS is just generally really smooth. As controlled as this walled garden may be, there's no denying that Apple's user interface is silky smooth, and importantly, it stays that way even years later. Apple is truly a master when it comes to memory management, and iOS is no doubt the most refined operating system in the smartphone market today, and it's understandable why people find it so pleasing and reliable. So those are the 10 super subtle reasons why the iPhone is so loved across the world. Let me know in the comments which ones you agreed with the most. And if you're team Android all day, every day, do me a favor and comment below on what you think Google does better than Apple. I'm super curious to know, and let's try and keep it civil down there.
Okay, that's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys found it useful. Again, I'd really appreciate it. Check out these other reviews if you're looking for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.